Hey guys, so I have a video of a slightly different format for you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at Manjaro, but uh, it's not going to be in the traditional desktop review fashion. I am going to be giving you a desktop tour, and it's going to be a slightly unusual desktop tour in the sense that I'm going to set up my desktop through the installation process as I explain it. This is going to be a long and a rambly video that many people will probably find quite boring. But I'm going to do it nonetheless because I feel that it's a good way to basically sort of narrate a lot of my software cho choices and a lot of the settings that I choose as well. So I'm going to be setting this up almost as if I was setting it up on my daily driver, but I am actually, of course, doing it from inside a virtual machine. So there might be a few changes. I'm going to be obviously making settings for one monitor, one hard disk drive, um, and all that kind of stuff. So... Uh, let's crack on. Now, I usually select the non-free drivers. The reason I do that is because I have a NVIDIA GTX 970, which requires them. I'm not going to be spending whatever it was, 300 quid on a graphics card and then not ha not having the full force of it. So, so there's that. But, uh, but I like that it gives you an option between free and non-free as well. Um, I wish more distributions would, would do that because NVIDIA drivers can be a little bit of a pain to get working on Windows, on Linux, on anything. Um, and having them like installed and set up on the live CD to make sure that it would work on, on any other uh, on any other computer uh, is, is, is great. That's brilliant. Um, I have never had a computer that I've failed to install Manjaro on and I've tried it on about seven different machines. So... Uh, that should give you an idea of the kind of faith that I have in it, especially because I come from the the bad old days of, of Linux distributions being incredibly hit and miss. Um, and that wasn't even the worst of it. So, as you can see here, the horrible virtual box bug of screwing up the mouse has surfaced again. Uh, I didn't think it happened on Arch-based distros, but I think it must be a versioning issue. So I'm just going to quickly go over to mouse, mouse and touchpad and just have a theme that's just a little bit easier to work with. It's, it doesn't negate the error, it doesn't happen not in a virtual machine, so we're good to go here. Uh, so we've got a few updates that we'll probably want to get through, but we'll want to install the system first. So let's install cal Calamaris. Now, it used to be the case that uh, this um, came with three installation options. Uh, one installation option, hang on a minute, it, Chose me for London, but for some reason still wants to give me a US keyboard. But there we go. Yeah, it used to come with three installation options, two GUI and one command line. Now it comes with a command line and a single GUI. This was back when Calamaris was in beta. Uh, so I've tried, I, I did a dry run on this, which is why my fake hard drive has already been chopped up. But, uh, but I'm going to do it the same way, just use the auto settings. I don't usually use the auto settings, of course, because it's a rolling release. I do have my home folder on a separate partition. You can do that quite easily, actually, through the manual partitioning. Um, let's do a new partition table. New partition. Uh, yep. Oops, no, uh, free space, there we go. Uh, we want to create a partition. Uh, we want it to be, can I Can I drag and drop? What's the good word? About there, you reckon? And we'll mount it as slat, as, as root. Uh, we won't encrypt it, there we go. And then uh, we could do a new partition. that. In fact, I'm going to forego swap because I do forego swap on oops, my actual machine because I've got 16 gig of RAM. So I uh, I don't have uh, swap. I don't have any. Oops, wrong one there. Da, 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 that's good. Okay, so there we go. That's how I partition my hard disk drive about I probably give more. I give. I give significantly more space to home on a bigger hard disk drive. Obviously, I've only got 32 gigs to play with here, um, and I don't have swap because I have 16 gig of memory, and I've never found a use for it, and it's not affected the running speed of the system one way or the other. So, um, so I don't bother. So there we go. That's it. And you install the bootloader on the master boot record of the hard disk drive. That's the usual settings. Alright, well let's go with that then, since it was such an, such an easy thing to do. 
Um, and I always, of course, use VM to uh, actually no, I don't I don't actually log in automatically, but I do tend to do that when I'm testing software simply because. Well, heck, what's the difference between not logging in, you know, not asking for a password and having a two, uh, a two character password? Uh, but since I'm trying to emulate it as close to my actual system as I can, I, um, I will do so. So it's going to crack on with the install. So I may skip some of this if I run out of things to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about Manjaro, why I choose Manjaro now, uh, and why I choose the XFCE version of Manjaro. So the KDE version of Manjaro is really good. Certainly a le legitimate choice if you are a KDE or QT fan. You probably want to pick that one over the XFCE. I have no preference whatsoever. I tend to feel that GTK is a little bit lighter. I certainly feel that XFCE is nice and lightweight, and I find that that helps playing games. I like the customizability as well. I like to have my taskbar at the top of the screen, but I'll cover that in the setup process. Um, I like the rolling release as well. It's nice not to have to reinstall um, operating systems. It's nice to have up-to-date software, and it's really nice to have access to the AUR. So the AUR, for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, who possibly don't run Arch-based distributions, right, is Manjaro works just like any other distribution in that you get upgrades, and it upgrades software. Now, it's a rolling release, so it upgrades full versions of software rather than just do things like security updates or, or tweak changes, but it actually does, you know, full software upgrades as part of a rolling release. So it o over time, your entire system uh, eventually will be switched out piece by piece for a newer upgraded system as those pieces become available. That's why I quite like rolling uh, releases, is because it just it keeps your system on the cutting edge without you having to constantly reinstall operating systems. Now, it's not as cutting edge as Arch itself or as uh, its main competitor, Antergos. Antergos is very similar to Manjaro um, in that it has a nice GUI um, installation process. It gives you, I think it's like six official desktops to choose from, you know, officially supported desktops, which is more than this. This gives you two officially supported ones, but man, the community uh, respins, um, some of them are really good. Like the i3 respin, really good. If you want a tiling window manager, I, I recommend the Manjaro i3 um, image. You know, I mean, I know a lot of people that are into tiling managers like to set up the whole thing from scratch themselves, but it is really interesting just to see a distribution um, sort of fleshed out with all the apps and tools for a tiling window manager. Like, I've never seen that before. Works really well. Easy to use, and I like having the keyboard shortcuts as part of the wallpaper. That's brilliant. Uh, and I think it also comes with Conkey, if I'm not um, mistaken. So the thing about Manjaro is that the community respins, the community distributions of based on Manjaro, they often have somewhat differing philosophies to the flagship Manjaro distributions. So for example, you won't see a flagship Manjaro distribution put Conkey on the desktop. That'll probably confuse and intimidate a lot of new users. But people running i3, they're probably going to be more comfortable with it. In fact, they're, they'll probably, you know, if, if it's not there by default, would probably be inclined to install it themselves. So so yeah, the, the software philosophies differ slightly from community release to community release as well. That's not necessarily a problem. Uh, I mean, the, the community, the Manjaro community seem really intelligent, down to earth, talented. So, so, so I feel that the distribution really is in good hands. This distribution is about five years old now. So it's, it's, it, it's had a while to work out some of the biggest issues. Uh, it recently has had a few issues. Um, uh, but um, when it comes to things like uh, they forgot to renew the the HTTPS for their website, their SSL certificates for their website, um, which was a bit of a, 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 a dropping the ball there. Um, which well, you know, like it wasn't like a massively big deal, but it looked really bad <laughs> for them. Um, it looked it, lo it probably looked worse than it was for them. But uh, but all in all, like Manjaro is the Linux distribution I've had the least amount of problems with out of all the distributions least amount of problems with it. The XFCE is customizable, lightweight, um, snappy, fast. Uh, I like that it's it's almost designed for rolling releases. It seems to have a big update about once between once a year and once every two years for the desktop environment. 
Uh, and and that's good because it means you don't have to constantly, you know, it's, it's easy on the download limits. Uh, with rolling releases, you really do need a good internet connection in order to deal with all the updates it gives you. Uh, if you have a slow internet connection, I really would just recommend an Ubuntu LTS at this point. But um, but if you've got a nice fast internet connection like I do, uh, and you, and you enjoy the the latest software, then this is this is a this is a good natural home. To be honest, um, I know a lot of you guys ask me in the comments, you know, Chris, what what really is the difference between Antogos and Manjaro? Why do you choose Manjaro? Um, I could just as easily have chosen Antogos. Uh, I, I, I'm not in any, you know, it's... I have a choice between two good things. I'm just going to choose one of the good things. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, and I, I tried Manjaro first. I think I had slightly less teething issues getting used to Manjaro slightly uh, I was probably more wowed by Manjaro because it was the first uh, distribution that um, that was rolling that really worked for me and it has rebooted back into the live CD oh that looks like an error Let's restart the machine. Maybe it was that I removed the CD through halfway through that menu. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so basically what I did, what that error was, was I removed the virtual CD as it was being read from. So don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, remember to remove the live CD before booting into your new system. Okay, so it's going to boot up into the standard Manjaro desktop operating system, the flagship one, with that horrible cursor again. This doesn't happen in the actual legitimate proper Manjaro. It just happens. It's a virtual box error, not a Manjaro error, as I understand it. Uh, I didn't expect it to happen on Arch-based distributions. It, it For a while, it just seemed to happen on Ubuntu-based ones, but... Oops. And that's the Manjaro welcome screen, which we do not need to see. Uh, themes, icons, there we go. Now, we have to do the, the old update process. Now, I can do this through the update manager here, but um, since I'm sort of setting up my distribution as I would for myself, I'm just going to use the command line. It's a bit easier, a bit more straightforward. You can see uh, anything that goes wrong. Okay, so usually when you update a Manjaro system, you want to go to the forums and website to make sure that there aren't any errors that you're walking into. It's always good to know what you're walking into. As you may have noticed, I just went Y, enter, Y, enter, Y, enter, which is generally not advised. But um, I did a dry run through this, and um, and also this is a virtual machine, and also in the interests of keeping this video uh, snappy, quick. You know me, I like to do my punchy as of recording 13 and a half minute videos. So, um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to just put that up there now. Let's look at the user interface, the UI. Now, how do I like to arrange my UI? Well, let's crack open the panel preferences here and unlock the panel. I like to have my panel right at the top there. I usually have it 30, but 27 is fine. We can lock the panel now. Have you noticed, right, there is a little divider there for the separator. It needs to be transparent. Um... And I remove the action buttons. The reason I remove the action buttons is under maximized windows, the close window button and the action button up there are very close together. Sometimes you can click on one when you want to click on the other if you're not paying attention. So it's if I shut down the computer, it's hardly something I'm doing all the time. It's not difficult just to pop, pull down the menu. Uh, also, window buttons. I do not like grouping 
So there's that. I quite like the vertex theme that comes with it, but it's not going to be the one that I'm going to settle on. All right, so here's how I like to set up my whisker menu. This is what it looks like at the moment. We're not going to show application descriptions. We're not going to show generic names. I like to know the actual application names. I like very small icons. Just displays the icon, saves the space. I like to position the search next to the panel button and the categories next to the panel button. Uh, recently used, I like to have 15 and I like to display it by default. So that means that all my recently used applications are nicely listed right down there. And um, I under as I understand it, yep, the Windows key opens and closes the menu. So if I wanted to open up Firefox, for example, there you go. Good stuff, and I think that is the uh, the broad strokes of it. Um, what else is there? Uh, let's put a nice desktop background on. Oh, there's some. Uh, also, I do. I'm going to put the vertex dark theme on first, just to show you. See, that's a real nice looking theme. If you like a dark theme, the one that comes sort of you know natively with uh, Manjaro is actually really good. It's not going to be the one that I stick on, but um, but it is good. Uh, usually with fonts, I'll do a Droid, Ser uh, Droid Sans font. This is good actually. This is this is uh, Cantarell, which uh, I would actually, if I was setting this one up now, on a, I would probably keep that font. But um, I like Droid Sans. Uh, it's it was developed for Android. So I, I kind of like it, also with uh, Window Manager as well. Droid Sans, size 10. Um, I don't want the roll up there either. So I think that's generally okay for now. It might require a little bit of teaking. There we go, desktop finally wanted to, to, to pop up. It doesn't come with the best wallpapers out of the box. Um, a good website for wall wallpapers is wallpapers.net. And I'm going to just choose... Oh, that's a, that's kind of a nice one. I don't like grey gray skies, though. There we go. I like this one. This one's good. Because this one... Doesn't that, it's the Manjaro Windows crossover, which is quite good. I even quite like the icon theme. The default icon theme. I wouldn't necessarily have an opposition to to keeping that. I mean, doesn't doesn't this look like a nice desktop? I think when it comes to colours and stuff, there's dark pastels. I don't like to have the transparent background. There we go. Dark pastels. Solarized dark. That looks good. Excellent, so that looks like it was all fully upgraded without a hitch. Good stuff. Okay. So this desktop is starting to take shape. Let's get some stuff installed. So it's as simple as going to the Add Remove Software Center. This is a great little um, package manager. Now Manjaro uh, uh, currently doesn't come with an, like an app store. This is the closest thing you get. This is fine for anyone that... that knows how to use it. Uh, I I have been told that they uh, plan on bringing in an app store in the future, which is good. I guess it's something that they, they need. Anything like the Mate, uh, the Ubuntu Mate uh, software boutique, it's just, it would be great. Okay, so let's get through this. Let's do Chromium. Let's do MPV. I'm, I know I'm going to skip out a few. Caden Live. Audacity, Dropbox, uh, what else? Oh, uh, VLC I usually remove. I don't remove Firefox even though it's not my browser. Um, Epiphany browser? Why the heck not? Uh, what else? Oof, crikey. Uh, I do uh, YouTube-DL, that's really good. It's particularly useful if you want to stream 
Twitch streams or YouTube streams using MPV. Uh, the arc theme. I want the arc themes. They're the ones that I'm going to be changing it to. Vertex themes also work nicely as well. Just regular vertex themes. Um, and I, I do like the Fienza icon theme. Have I missed anything out? Yes. Key pass X two. Okay. And let's activate. Yeah, you are. Because I need to install Pepper Flash. Just click on the AUR button there. So this is quite good, is that it allows you to distinguish between the repositories and the AUR just with a simple button click. So it's clear but easy. That's what I quite like. Pepper Flash. So this gives you version 23 of Flash for uh, Chromium. Uh, now, I did read in OMG Ubuntu that um, the standard Flash is coming back uh, for support on Firefox. This is undoubtedly good news, but I suspect will be not as full features as the Pepper Flash one. But still, you know, Flash is dying. Like, to be honest, I'm a hair's breadth away from actually removing Pepper Flash from the system. The only reason I use it is once in a blue moon. Literally about two or three times a year, I will come across a website that requires a Flash applet. But it is getting so rare nowadays that Flash is becoming um, the only way to do things. There are a few video sites that have uh, BBC iPlayer, for example, still uses Flash by default. But if you don't have Flash, it will take you over to the HTML5 player. Uh, and, and what I liked about the BBC iPlayer, just as a quick side note, is that they um, switched over from Flash to HTML5, both with both on streaming and on video on demand at once, like the entire system moved over at once. Unlike um, other other systems that have done one then the other, which makes things a little bit clunky. Okay, so let's crack on. Let's install that. I think. Uh, also, what I don't like is um, I don't even know what's that. Uh, Gawai de Cook music player. There we go. Also, for some reason, uh, not for some reason, for obvious reasons, you might find a more up-to-date version of software in the repository. So, for example, this music player that we've got here, that's version 0.4. The version in the repository is 0.3. Like, like it, you know, like it, like it goes. The AUR is risky. The AUR is dark and full of terrors. But there is. A fair amount of software that also releases as through the AUR as an official channel. So don't write it off all the time. Um, in fact, there is one program I did forget to. Use. I do this every time, right? I'd, I, you know, I'll, I'll list down many of the programs that I use. Uh, I forgot to install InSync, uh, which I will do uh, later, I guess. So it's uh, as that's installing. What else can we do? Uh, I can uh, I can give you a showcase of some of the software that that comes through this. G parted, that's good. That comes comes with it. Ice T. Uh, I've removed that from my system actually. I don't use uh, that's Java in in browsers, um, but I don't really use Java in browsers. It's generally considered a security risk, and it's not commonly used. This is interesting. Uh, Q. PDF view is a QT PDF viewer. Real snappy, real nice, really quite like it. It's QT based, but for some reason it's the one that's come bundled with Manjaro. Now, I do know that QT have been making efforts uh, to make their software and the software that runs on their um, toolkits to be very cross platform, you know, easy to cross platform. Which is really good. So you know, I guess I guess that is the the the, the fruition of that. Also, notice that Qt apps and GTK apps, you know, like this is a Qt app next to a GTK three app next to a GTK two app. So you know, the theming and everything just looks, you know, nicely nicely themed together. You know, and look, you know, like that is a nice icon theme as well. 
Okay, so it's now, what's that, loading up the packages? Yeah, loading the package files. Uh, what I usually do, right, so I... Chromium is my main browser, but I do have Firefox around because, I mean, most people who are vaguely into computers and the internet will probably have a second browser. So this is all loading up for the first time. I do not sync any of my browsers. Um, I'm perfectly capable of importing and exporting and backing up my own bookmarks. I can remember the, the browser add-ons I use. And to be honest, finding a website is, just, is, is easy. Like you just type it into the search engine. Um, so I tend to not have bookmarking, sync, and all that kind of stuff on. Um, because if there isn't a a way that it really improves your user experience, you probably shouldn't just be uploading personal info to the cloud. I mean, I don't necessarily have anything against the practice, but um, but I I don't consider the gain risk to be to be worthwhile on that one. But what I do set in my Firefox is I never remember history, and there we go. Oops. There we go. Just wanted a few confirmations from uh, from the AUR, and that's going up nicely. So yeah, what I like to do with Manjaro is uh, I like to make it so that it never remembers history. I like to use this as almost like, um, not necessarily like my incognito mode browser, but as my my completely vanilla browser with no cookies and no add-ons and all that kind of stuff. It's just a, it's just a very sort of pure sort of guest mode almost for. Um, for Chromium. Uh, it wants a password. You can actually set it so that it doesn't keep asking you for confirmation, which I may wish to do. You should, but um, usually with the AUR I kind of know what I am installing when I'm installing it. I know the sort of the risks that I'm, I'm taking and also when it does come to stability, sometimes I play a little fast and loose because I do kind of have that luxury of being able to sort of reinstall my system. I don't like doing it. It is a hassle. It, it is a drag. But I'm pretty good with backing stuff up. And it's it's never too much of a problem if my hard disk were to go kaput tomorrow. And to be honest, you really have to sort of always do, sort of live your life like that. Like, you have to always assume that your hard disk drive like when you turn it on in the morning tomorrow, could fail. And you need to have like a plan of action if that were to happen. Okay, so let's um, install the remaining package from the AUR. I wish InSync would make its way into Manjaro. There may be licensing issues uh, into the main repositories. but uh, And I think you can install InSync and InSync for Thunar and they reinforce themselves quite nicely. And you'll see that there are significantly fewer confirmations through this process. So I don't usually uh, like having Flash installed on my system, but um, I kind of feel that, that I walk into pro times when I need to install it or need to use Flash just often enough that I need to keep it around. I don't like it. It's a, it's a horrendous piece of software, but and it's it's you know it is dying. It's on its way out. So let's update our visuals now that we've got our new themes downloaded. So the, I mean, even XFCE comes with a nice dark theme. I like dark themes. As you can see, some themes haven't been updated. This is what a theme looks like if it's not GTK. 3.20 compatible. XFC does. It looks nice in GTK2 applications. <laughs> okay, so but Arc Dark, which is my one of choice, that is. So you can see now that looks nice and look at that. 
uh, icons. I like the Fienza Darkest. So as you can see here, uh, Fienza, like the Fienza Darkest, these are settings for all different kinds of themes. So the darkest is because I have a dark theme. If I did Fienza Normal, you'd see that the, the icons there are black. The icons on Thunar there are black. The icons in the menu are black. So it makes it contrast better. And that looks real nice. Like I like the, 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 the one color buttons. I also like that you can you can sort of uh, you can customize them for the you can customize um yeah you can customize them depending on on how dark your theme is uh window manager so window manager takes care of the title bars all at the top um so you can do the normal vertex themes as well but we're on arc arc dark or arc darker and there we go that's our arc darker and there we go so um, and then within sync you just link it with your, your Google account and you're good to go so I think I'm gonna wrap it up there I think that's about uh, me done for now, showing you how uh, some of the software choices that I have and uh, and, I, and some of the layout choices that I have. Um, I actually quite like having the taskbar at the top there because when you're browsing, like your tabs and your windows and stuff, having it all across the top of the screen, uh, it's something that I find really, really helps with the workflow. Okay, so it's just finishing off there now. Cool. So that's about it from, from me today. This is very similar to my Manjaro desktop. I, I actually have some wallpapers from wallpapers.net uh, on the background uh, doing a slideshow, actually, once every 30 minutes. It's just nice for some scenery, which is kind of why I keep the um, minimize all windows. Just just allows me to, to enjoy a nice photograph whenever I click that button, I guess. <laughs> um, so that's about it for me today. That is just a very brief overview of the kind of workflow that I set my system up for. As you can see, it's not particularly advanced or finicky or anything like that. Uh, it is just reasonably standard. I'd like to have the taskbar at the top. I like XFCE. I like the compositing effects, but I sometimes turn it off if I need to. Um, and, uh, and those are my software choices. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I'll be Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.